And then he describes, and this was something that was actually very surprising as, as I read his writings. He describes immediately after that, and he uses weird language to talk about it, but, but what I gather is a big rock fell on him. Like, like it just, I don't know, came dislodged somehow. Or, anyway, he ended up getting pinned by a rock. And it's like he's unable to move his limbs, and he's there under this giant rock. And he says that he's looking up to the sun, and he says, I don't know exactly why I did it, but I just cried out to Elijah to come and to rescue me and to come and save me. And he, he writes about how it was wrong for him to do that. And he doesn't know why he was calling out to somebody other than his God. But, but it just popped out of his mouth and came to his mind, I should pray to Elijah. Which is so interesting, because just previously in the past paragraph, he is the one who is convincing these pagan sailors to pray to the one true God. And then he talks about how in a moment of complete stress and pain and panic, he, he prays to Elijah. And, and he goes on to say, you know, it was wrong of me to do that. I should not have done that. Um, you know, uh, and, and describes that. So we see, for one, that Patrick is nothing if not honest. He's an honest man who's not prone to exaggerate to make himself look better because that's I'd skip that if I were writing my autobiography, you know, the things that I say when rocks fall on me. <laughs> um, um, but, but we see that, that he is honest and that he is humble. You know, he began his letter, this, this, this um, you know, confession of this story of his life. He begins by saying, you know, I am Patrick, a sinner. And then he tells his story, and he includes here and elsewhere confessions of his sin. And then he ends the same thing by saying, and I, and I am Patrick, and I am a sinner, but for the grace of God. And, and so he is not someone who thinks that he's perfect. He's not someone who thinks that he's wonderful. He would not introduce himself as St. Patrick. I'm Patrick, the sinner, saved by God's grace. I'm a, I'm a dirty stone that God cleaned off and has used. So he, in a moment of weakness prayed to Elijah and admits that it's wrong. And so, like, we can take an encouragement from this um, in that the Apostle Paul says that we should, um, uh, we should carefully consider ourselves because it's when we think that we're strong, that's when we're weak. And, and often it's a time where we can be the most confident that, that we fall. And Patrick, who just stood up for monotheism, who just said, lads, we should pray to God and no one else, he falls in that. And so, so we're encouraged in that to even ask God for strength in the areas that we don't think we need strength in, because that's where we rely on ourselves and not upon Him. And also, there's an application from this that St. Patrick, the patron saint of Ireland, says it's wrong to pray to anyone but God. And that's something that's uh, perhaps a very relevant message for us to this day, for this country today. There is, and here's the height of irony, there are prayers to St. Patrick, and people have been encouraged to pray to this man, who confessed his sin of praying to anyone but God, to praying to a holy man, a follower of God from generations previous. He said, it was wrong of me to do that, I shouldn't have. And ironically and tragically, he now is the supposed recipient of prayers to this day. So, his confession of sin is a warning to us, and also, I believe, a reproof against any false doctrine that would say that other people are up there waiting for you to pray. If you don't want to talk to God, there's other people. It's so wrong. <laughs>